Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust. Built to turn wood. Enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Welcome to Wood Turning. Today we're going to be working with ambrosia maple and we're going to be doing some gilting on here. Not a gilt thing, but not our gilt trip, but gilting, which is a cream that you put on here. And this is a mixture of silver, gold, and copper to get this effect. And in person, this is just really incredible. Plus, this is the same wood I used for the cosmic clouds and people kind of got onto me for spraying black on there. <laughs> okay, this is my redemption video because we're going to leave the perfect wood on the outside so it's going to look nice and beautiful. Now, gilt cream comes in jars and in tubes. This is Celtic Copper from Chroma Craft. It's really nice stuff. It's Nick Agar's uh, signature series. And it's really neat stuff. It just is kind of like, I don't know, makeup or paste. So there's the copper right there. Really neat stuff. And then the cool part about it, uh, I got a little bit of inspiration from Jimmy Clues and how he uses gilt cream when he makes tool handles and such. So we're going to be working with a little bit of fire today. <laughs> Believe me, that's hot. And that's the one thing you don't want to do in this shop unless you have one of these, a fire extinguisher hanging by. So don't ask me why I know that one either. So we are starting with about a 14 inch piece of ambrosia maple. And I've gone ahead and I've already drilled a hole in here so I can mount this on a worm screw on my lathe. Okay, I have my worm screw in my chuck, and I'm using the big one because I want all those teeth to really grab in here because this is a really big piece of wood. So I'm going to take this and shove right out of the way <laughs> um, and screw it on by hand here. So there we go. The cool thing about the way these things grab is it ain't coming out because you notice I'm spinning this the opposite direction than what the lathe goes. So it perpetually tightens it as you spin the wood. So it's really good for keeping it on nice and tight. Just make sure you don't drill the hole either too small or too big. Too small, it's gonna crack the wood possibly. Too big, it's going to strip out when you screw it on. So you just have to futz with it. Make a test drill in a piece of wood that you have that's scrap or something like that and go with it that way. And you'll figure out what works well. Now, absolutely normally 100%, Wear a face mask when you're doing this. However, you can't hear me, so I'm gonna have on my goggles today. And I promise to be safe, because as I turn this, I'm gonna stand over here out of the firing line. So if this thing goes all wonky and stuff, I've got the headstock, I got the tool rest, everything's protecting me. Odds are it's gonna go over that way and take out Brian, which is no big loss, but you know, it hurt a little. <clears throat> Let's see. Let's start off with, this is my, <laughs> I think that's like a three-quarter inch bowl gouge. Eh, not quite. Five-eighths inch, maybe? I don't know my math that well. But anyway, let's start this up. I'm going to bring my remote control. That's what I love about having a robust lathe is you have this remote control you can put anywhere you want and stick her on there. So I'm going to take my speed way down and start this up just to see what's going on. Because the very first thing I want to do is to trim up this edge. So I'm going to pick the speed up. You'll get a little bit of wobble if it's somewhat out around. But one thing is you don't have to have it really going real fast because that's a lot of feet per second zipping by. When we get towards the center of the blank, it'll slow down on the cut. But right now, this thing is hauling. So I've got the bevel aiming, aiming the way I want to go. And I'm just sliding the tool across. And I can tell from the bevel contact, I'm almost rounded out already because it's such a big, beautiful blank of wood. I don't want to waste too much of it. And the side you're looking at is going to be the bottom. 
of the platter. There we go. Okay, let's stop that and see what that looks like. Ah, that looks really good, nice and clean. Look at the beautiful streaking in here of the ambrosia maple. It's really cool because there's an ambrosia beetle that gets in the wood and it causes uh, disease or uh, damage to the tree and that causes all this beautiful look. Anyway, so I want to move this and we're gonna start working on the bottom. We're gonna shape it and make a tendon or a recess actually so we can remount it then and do the top. Okay, what we're gonna do is make a recess here that my chuck jaws can expand into. Then we can hold this to turn this side of the platter. So I've, I'm ready to start working on that. It's a little bit roughed up here, so I'll just take a little bit of that off and clean it up. And just for fun, I'm gonna move my uh, speed control over here and put it on my tailstock so it's easier to reach in case something goes drastically wrong. So you can see there's the center, and I have the tool position to where I can have the handle down a little bit and still touch the center. So now what we do is just a pull cut. And with the pull cut, I'm just cutting with that tip and I'm rolling it over a bit. All I'm trying to do is just smooth out this piece of wood right here. I don't need to worry about anything out here because that's going to be the wings of the bowl. And see that little bitty bump there? I'm going to take that out, make a little indentation and do this. So I have a compass set and it's just a little bit wider than what I need for my chuck jaws. And so it's on center now, so nothing's happening, right? So there, now that's what I need to cut away to make the recess for the bottom of the platter. But I don't want to go in more than a quarter of an inch because I have a worm screw coming through the other side and we don't want to make a big flat funnel. <clears throat> anyway, so I'm just doing a pull cut to clear some of that out. That's about the right depth, I think. It's amazing how little uh, grip or wood you need to be able to hold that. Now I'm gonna change tools and I'm gonna move my tailstock out of the way because it's gonna be in the way. As a matter of fact, I'll just turn this off to be safe. So I'm gonna take my skew and we're going to make the edge right here for the tenon. It needs to be dovetailed. So I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. I've raised it up to where I'm on center now. I'm gonna take it down just a little bit and I'll show you again. So right there, I'm on center. You want to uh, present this flat like so. So we'll turn this on. And now we're going to come in here and just gently push in. And you can actually flatten this out as you go and make it real easy to sand later. Get that clear so you can see it. So push it in straight. Now I'm going to start pushing in at an angle. And you can see the dovetail I made. Now, my chuck jaws will fit in there. They'll expand in and hold really well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna flatten this out a little bit and then we'll start shaping the platter. OG, and I mean OG. OG is this shape we're gonna make now. It's a curve in, a curve out, and it goes to the bottom. It's a really classic shape and it makes the platter lift up off the table. It doesn't look as heavy that way. So why they call it OG, I have no idea, but we're going to make one. So the first thing we want to do is just start removing some of this excess wood that's in the way. So I want to kind of just chomp away on this end and thin this out a little bit. Then we can start doing the shaping. So this is just bulk removal of wood. I'm going to turn this up just a little bit. We're going to be doing a push cut this time. And I'm just anchoring my hand here away from that spinning blank and just going in and taking a little bit of wood at a time. Not a hero cut, I'm going in about a quarter inch. Because if you go a bigger cut than that, it's hard wood, it's gonna get jumpy, it's gonna get out of control. And from the shape of that OG, I know I don't need any of this here, so I'm just plowing my way through it. Make some really cool shavings. Yeah, I love turning ambrosia maple because maple is a really nice wood to work with. And you can feel or hear the, jit, the jiggle, the jitter. That's because the bottom is not completely flat. But the only place I'm really worried about is right here because this is where it's going to rest on the table. So the rest of this is going to go away. So I'm going to come back here and keep pushing this out. But when I'm talking about shavings, look what's hitting my chest. I mean, <laughs> that's almost as much hair as I have on my chest in real life. 
Now, if I could only transfer that to my head, I'd be very happy. <laughs> but anyway, let me work on this a little bit, and we'll get closer to the OG shape. OG, OG shape. And I'll show you how we do that. Okay, we're sneaking in on our OG shape, and you can kind of see that it's going around, and then it's curving this way a little bit. But you can also see that this is pretty thick in the rim, so I've got about a quarter inch more to take off. But I wanted you to see some of the shaping. What I did run into, though, was, oh, gee, look at that. We got a hole in here, which is cool. If it stays on there, that's going to give this a lot of character. If not, it's just going to go away. The only issue I have with this is Brian's now going to be working more to this side because in case this lets go, I don't want it running over there and hitting him. So when you're working with stuff this big, it is dangerous, and you've got to watch your speeds. you got to watch your technique. you got to watch where you put your hands so you don't cut it open, that sort of stuff. But it is fun. <laughs> so we're going to start it up. And I'm still just doing a pull cut. Now, I went back. I've only sharpened one time so far because I'm using Thompson tools, and I love them because they're triple heat treated and cryogenically treated so the edge lasts a really really long time and I can't tell you how many times I've cut myself just by touching that like that and I better quit that but anyway all I've been using is this edge here so we're just going to be doing a pull cut again and again and again and just following our shape so you can see I've got a tool like this right now if I roll it here it's flat if I bring it over a little bit more it starts to touch and that's how it cuts and you can take really nice shavings. Look how sharp that edge is and how beautiful. Look at that. Just feathers of wood coming off. So you're able to actually paint with your hands in a way, or sculpt. It, it's like pottery, and this is an extension of your hands for pottery using the tool. But now talking while you have all these shavings going in your mouth is a whole other thing. <coughs> but anyway, this is how you make the OG shape. Now, if Brian can get a little bit wider, and show my body because <laughs> as I choke. So I've got my body here. So watch, as I swing my body to my left, I'm making the round shape. As I make the cove, I now swing my body back around to this side. So I'm making an S move with my body. <laughs> Need some dance music, don't we? <laughs> Maybe not. But anyway, if you use your body, it really helps you anchor the shape, and it also makes it so much easier to get the correct shape. Now, I'm a little flat there, so I'm just gonna wiggle that away, or whittle. Of course, I'm wiggling right now, but nobody's seeing that. But anyway, I just wanna keep doing this, and I wanna make this lip thinner and have it stand out a little bit further. And then once I'm done with this shape and get it where I want it, we'll just sand it, and we'll be ready to turn this around. Now sand it to 320 grit. And I think this is looking pretty good. We'll blow it off here a bit. Get me to. Woo! <laughs> ah, oh, that's beautiful wood. Look at the colors in there. This is going to come out really well. I can see a little uh, tiger's eye or quilting in there. That's neat. But the next step, we're going to take this. We're going to. Whoops, I don't need that yet. We're going to lock this in and we're going to unscrew this off of the worm screw. And like I said, I sanded to 320 grit because I want a really nice, good finish on here. And this is some really, really hard wood, believe me. Okay, so we've got our platter off. We'll set it down right here. Drop it there, whichever. <laughs> so I want to take my worm screw out like so. And, oh, I'm going to change one thing over because that's what I like about this easy chuck. They make a great chuck. It's just back out on the market again. And uh, we will just undo these. Stick that in. Pops out a jaw. You put the next jaw and you're ready to go. So <laughs> that is amazing. So if you look around, there's another chuck on the market too, I think, which kind of does this. But this seems to be the slickest one I've ever found. So, pop these out. There we go. Now, this is what's going to be our recess, or our chuck jaws that are going to go into the recess. So I'm going to close this way down. And here's where the fun starts. So we'll take this. So we got the recess right here, right? 
So we'll take this and just set it on here. And so I got a lot of space there. I'm gonna open it up. And you can see how all of a sudden the jaws start expanding into that recess. And these sensor dovetail, they give you a great, great hole. Now, now we've got this turned, what we're gonna be doing in the next segment, in part two, we're gonna turn this shape bit dish in there, and then we're gonna play with fire and guilt cream. No guilt included. Anyway, stay tuned, we'll be right back. Tim's American Beauty was made by Robust Tools, America's premier lathe manufacturer. Quality hardened tool rests and live centers too. Robust, built to turn wood, enjoyed for a lifetime. Thompson Lathe Tools, welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner, for wood turners.